Hi everyone, in this video I would like to briefly talk about saving your renderings and file formats. So after you hit F12 in Blender, your picture will render and you can save it going to those options here or by pressing Shift S. Once we do that, there are multiple uh, file format options we can choose from. So let's go through most of them, the most important ones. The JPEG is a standard graphics file you would use for preview renderings. I don't recommend using JPEGs if you want to apply post-production later, but let's, uh, let's save it and we will see how it works in the later stages. The quality, I would go for 100% if using JPEGs. Now, the second file format I would be actually recommending using would be PNG, either in 8 or 16 bits. Uh, for post-production, I would switch to 16 bits because that gives us a little bit more color information within the picture to play with. And the third file format, I also recommend using, especially if you want to apply your post-production directly in Blender, is the OpenXR format because it saves our image in 32 bits. And what it means is, I will close the rendering window right now and go to the compositing here. This is in general the area where we will perform post-production directly in Blender. So as you can see, I'm clicking use notes here. And this is the very basic setup that will be available. Nothing really happens within the window itself. So I'm gonna press Shift A, choose output and viewer. Now, when I have a viewer within this setup, I'm able to plug it into the image output and have a preview of what's happening within the compositor. Sometimes when you have those borders um, in the older Blender 2.80 versions, you can adjust updated by switching this icon here. And we can hide this tab by pressing the N key. So let's go full screen right now and see what we can do here. The main reason I'm bringing up the compositor at this point is because once we render an image in Blender, it will be saved within the compositor. But if we restart Blender, this input from the lender, render layers will be gone, unfortunately. Blender doesn't keep it inside. And you might ask, why would we need it? Well, let me show you. If we, let's say, add an RGB curves to our node setup here and decrease them, you can see we are having a lot of color and light information within the picture itself. So it's basically non-destructible as long as we are keeping the original rendered file within Blender. And if you restart Blender, you will lose it. So the way to avoid re-rendering everything over and over again is saving your files to 30 Two bit format, which was the XR file that I showed you just a second ago. As you can see, I'm running a completely new and clean Blender file, and let's go to the compositing, enable the nodes again, and this is what you will get by default, so nothing in the render layers because we didn't render anything. But if I press Shift A and choose input image, here I can choose, well, an image. Let's do that right now. And let's choose the XR file that we have saved before. Once I move it to the compositing, composite node and to the viewer node, this is basically the same setup we had in our original Blender file. I can delete this node because we will be using this Blender file only for compositing. So uh, you might have noticed I'm able to zoom in, zoom in, zoom out the image. I do this by the V key. V zooms out, Alt V zooms in. And when I, <clears throat> sorry, when I press the middle mouse button, I'm able to pan the node setup. And with Alt middle mouse button, I'm able to pan around with my uh, background image. 
to show you the main differences between the 8, 16, and 32 bit files, let's add on the RGB curves again, plug them here, and let's say go down like that. So you can see um, we are kind of preserving a lot of details around the images, uh, the different outputs I'm getting while playing around with the curve. Let's now duplicate this node by pressing Shift D and let's choose the 8-bit JPEG file. So I'm going to also duplicate the viewer node. And you can see, I think, directly just by plugging in the nodes, the difference in the image uh, is visible. So here we have everything flattened out and not that many color details as in the 32-bit image. Let's also import the PNG file. And let's copy the viewer. So yeah, the PNG file, even though it has 16 bits, it gives us more or less the same result. If we import the files to Photoshop, uh, this is not happening because Blender, well, tries to get as much of the color information from 30 bits as possible. That's why it's making those images appear flat. If we copy the curves and plug them in, you can see by going down with the curve, we get way less light in those areas here, uh, in a difference to, to this node setup. So if we compare them, you can see, yeah, the quite a lot of information is lost here. Another example how we can actually present the 32-bit information or a 32-bit image in contrast to 8 or 16 bits is using the filter and it's going to be a glare, for example. If I plug it into the 32-bit file, you can see we are able to get those nice highlights, those effects uh, from the very bright highlighted areas when if I plug it into the JPEG file, basically nothing happens because Blender and the file itself doesn't have any more light information about those areas, so it's not possible to generate this effect. So to sum things up, uh, in general, if you want to do the post-processing directly in Blender later during the project development, you have to save your render files to 32 bits, which will be the open or simple the XR file format. Um, if you want to do the post-processing in, let's say, Photoshop or GIMP, I would recommend sticking to the PNG file, 16 bits. You can use 8 bits as well if you want to, but I would recommend 16 bits. And if you simply want to save the render previews, do some quick renderings, then I would stick to the JPEGs because it's not that important to have all of that extra information in just a preview file. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofor store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.